sometimes business is crazy yesterday when we came to get the dump trailer with the 73 godzilla the trailer tire was flat literally off of the rim literally the rim was sitting on the ground and there was a chunk of metal hanging out of the sidewall and i went into the truck stop here to see if they could service these commercial tires because these are 17.5 they are really good tires are really thick good traction even in the snow they're much better than the normal trailer tires like we have on our other truck but when you need service on a 17.5 inch tire it can be expensive and they want it like $275 just for the tire and they couldn't even mount the tire because they're too short-handed and all that so I ended up having to work number one without this trailer and then coming back and after work taking off all these tires and well taking off the one tire taking it to the tire shop getting it repaired and also got the other spare repaired too because the spare had a metal in it and I didn't never get around to fixing it so I finally had to get around to it yesterday and on top of all of that the battery was dead earlier this week so all this all at once i had the battery die the truck's not charging all that crazy stuff but anyway we just put a new fuse in our two or not in our 350 so i guess we'll go ahead and see if this thing will finally charge the trailer all right so i got the trailer home and as of right now we are still not charging our battery we're only holding 12 volts when this truck is charging the battery it reads 14 volts or high 13s because that's what the truck is at so for whatever reason even though i replaced the even though i replaced the uh fuse here i don't know if it's because it's in park or what it's not in drive i don't know what the deal is but yeah not charging our battery again so this is where i run into the problems of not knowing when the truck is going to send the voltage to the rear so that's kind of why i like that upfitter switch overlay where you overlay the wiring underneath the truck to actually ensure that the truck gets its 12 volts even with the whatever regardless of the system the only downside is if i overlay that wire with a 10 gauge wire well then i gotta fuse only the 30 amps and i have to take it to a 8 gauge wire I think 8 gauge might be enough for 40 amps which is what we're running then I have to actually connect that 8 gauge wire here and we're not protecting this circuit properly because I don't know the amp rating on this plug the amp rating here and yeah this is uh if this is 12 gauge I think it might be 12 gauge 12 3 it says and there's some 14 gauge in here so we're not fusing appropriately even now because there's no 10 gauge in this wire we're already under fusing our system here and yeah we're most certainly under fused here because our 14 gauge wires which are blue and white are the charging circuits so we're only fusing so it's all this all this worry about fusing I could just not have it could not really be an issue because we're already well under fused over fused we're well over fused anyway for a lot of this wiring and it hasn't been an issue so far it's not enough to burn up any of the wiring but when you look at the actual charts that I didn't write the charts they're saying 30 amps on a 10 gauge wire and things like that so that's also why when I did my inverter I had such thick wiring because according to all the charts and stuff you need that thick wiring so eventually you know a month two months of just sitting will kill my gps and i gotta have my gps because if someone knocks off this gps then they can steal the trailer and get away so there it is right there but anyway let me go ahead and show you what i'm working with so our pickup truck bed is full and we're gonna just put all these leaves from the pickup truck bed into this mower and then put it all into this trailer so let's go ahead and get it going all right so this is how we are making our transfer basically taking this in here dumping it dumps like so and yeah that's pretty much it what do you guys think about that comment below all right here on the job just finished a little cleanup here and i did confirm still not charging no charging of the battery so i know at least right now i want to go ahead and pull some of this wiring 
out of here. Number one, our our ground strap that is uh, right here. I'm either going to pull it or I'm going to overlay it with another wire. Maybe some of that 10 gauge or maybe something a little, even a little heavier than that 10 gauge. So that we actually bring grounding to the body. Actually, too, look at this. I could ground it because this is grounded here on to the breakaway, which is interesting. But I could ground this into the box itself with another ground wire. We're only 10 gauge wire to our ground. Well, right now we're only 14 gauge wire to our ground. And we are 14 gauge wire to our um, charging. So, I mean, for all I know, I could already have burned a connection in here somewhere that I'm not aware of it could even be I mean I don't know what's going on like I really couldn't tell you where why I'm not getting a charge to this battery at any point so I did confirm that we blew a fuse in the truck I did replace the fuse it's still not charging but anyway the truck's doing good like we're we're at about a thousand on the tongue as we sit right here right now and the hitch is weighted for rated for 1800 pounds according to the sticker on the hitch and this unit here I believe is rated for 2000 2200 I think I don't know but this one was the one that I retired because it was a little bit loose so I need to reorder this and get a new one and I need to go ahead and do the airbags on the 350 I really think I need to go ahead and do that while this is okay not a big deal a little squat now, we're not nowhere near the overload springs or anything, and it's pulling okay. It would be nice to go ahead and have those airbags done. So when that spreader gets in here, that's going to be some serious weight. And the truck does well as far as power. It has enough. But the suspension, I'm, I'm missing that 450 suspension. But anyway, I guess uh, we'll continue and see you guys at the next scene. All right, guys, now we are shut down for the rain. Uh. Sometimes it's just tough. But that's pretty much it for the video today, guys. Yes, business is crazy. I wish I would have filmed my sorrows a little more with the trailer tires being flat and all that stuff. I just didn't film that day. And, you know, with all that stuff going down, uh, my wife even asked me. She's like, oh, my God, are you stressed out? And I'm like, no, over what? Like, just a trailer tire? Not that big a deal, like went and got it fixed honestly those commercial tires were easier to fix because by the time you go to the commercial place the service is so much better to a place called a sile tire and they took care of business it was very nice so they're not hard to service once you find the right place to do it but was i stressed out about that stuff no even my uh helper was like oh my god i bet you're so stressed it's like it's not a big deal you know we started off this year with no help like it was literally just me i was just getting out of the cdl class so i had a little bit of a late start a little bit distracted start to the season i mean i was like running around trying to do quotes and stuff for the staff i didn't have for just myself before the season was really kicking off and then sure enough the season kicks off no staff no staff whatsoever but i did i got i did work out a little bit of help i got a call from my real estate agent he sent me a son to work and i picked up another worker from a previous person who worked for me his sister wanted to work this year until she went to college so that was cool but it was it was hard because i'm training these people who are going back to school high school or college or whatever and it's like it's hard to train somebody if they're going to leave again right away so that was a challenge but you think about how crazy business can be i hired this guy from the internet i don't know from one of the hiring sites and he was talking all this hype about how good he was and how he could do everything and he started out and he was horrible he just wasn't very good at all and he also brought scabies with him like he was covered in sores 
He was scratching himself, and I really didn't know what the heck was going on. But I ended up letting him go because he was just not good at the job, and he claimed to be so great, and I had to pay him a very high wage just to get him to come in. But if he was good, maybe it would have been worth it. But no, he was horrible. And he was going to get me run off of my accounts. That's how bad he was. And his physical condition was poor too. Like, you're about to have faint and have a heart attack. And I'm paying you. And you're new. And you're not good. And you're, oh, I'm diabetic. Oh, I'm going to, uh, I can't be. And then, you know, the whole thing is like, I can't be doing all this by myself. I can't be like, bro, you ain't even by yourself yet. Sometimes you might have to be by yourself you what kind of i can't hire you like i can't keep keep you working but he got let go and next thing you know i'm itchy i'm itching all over too i get covered in scabies i had no idea what was going on i had freaking welts all over me permanent scars all over me i thought it was mosquitoes biting me but no it was freaking something new something called scabies and that was a huge thing freaking knocked out the scabies with all different kinds of creams and stuff but before i even used the cream i tried to kill it uh holistically so i was taking super hot baths cooking my body putting my apple cider vinegar it would work for a little but it just wasn't the scabies kept coming back worse and it was just the welts were just all over my butt that's what really told me that it was something not normal when i had welts on my butt that let me know that these are not mosquitoes biting my butt cheeks like this doesn't make any sense so figured out it was the scabies got the cream everybody in the house ended up getting it a little bit but at least i had the cream all the workers got it too it's like it was in the seats of the truck that's crazy guys that's the kind of crazy stuff that happens when you are in business and then after the scaby guy left the company boom i got hit with the 450 freaking jack the frame on it uh while towing the trailer luckily everything was covered and uh just stuff like that guys stuff like that is what goes down in business uh when you just work on the line at forward you can go 10 years before anything like that happens maybe something like that will happen one time but that's just normal business and i'm not even a large business i mean i'm talking uh a couple trucks not that much stuff i mean what happens when you have 10 trucks you probably got something going down every single day like crazy but uh, anyway that's it for today's video just wanted to make a quick one business is crazy anyway my name is sean this is ds trucks see you guys in the next video over and out